guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be talking about granite versus quartz countertops. And I actually got this idea from one of my buyers. And thank you, Wyatt. This is an incredible idea, great for a video, but I really wanna start a series to kind of simplify and break down a lot of these differences in materials that people use for buildings. Because you hear these words thrown around a lot by realtors, and, and a lot of times not everybody even knows the differences between these things. So I wanna break it down starting with this video. The most common thing you're gonna probably see is quartz versus granite. What are the differences? Are they priced different? Do they have different value when being sold? And ultimately, how are they made and how do they actually get brought into your home? So we're going to go over those differences today, but we'll have a bunch of other videos in the future, everything from roofing to laminate versus vinyl floors, and we'll go over all the differences and everything. So when you purchase a home, you can actually sit there during the walkthroughs and know what's going on and know the differences in these and how it's going to affect you when you actually live in the home. So let's get into the video, guys. But moving on to number one, I actually want to get into how these are actually made because this was my largest misconception. And what actually I was shocked when I started researching into what the, the actual products are and the materials are. I thought they were just both from big old quarries and marble was one kind of thing and granite was another and quartz was another. And they just kind of came from different places, but they were all these kind of like white rocks with veins in it. That's really what I thought. And it's actually quite different. So granite is that. Granite is what you actually think of that when you think of people going to these Italian quarries and mining these huge slabs and breaking them down and turning them into countertops. Granite is very much like that. Um, it is a very intensive process. Usually it's taken from quarries other places, shipped to somewhere to be manufactured, and ultimately shipped back to the United States. And that can be a large part of why it does cost a little bit more than quartz. But if you're thinking of that, that actually is truly what granite is. It is a whole stone, and it is brought to you just in a manufactured and cut format. And quartz is actually a lot different. So quartz actually still is a natural material. It's still these little quartz crystals, except they get processed. They get basically pulverized into little tiny bits. And then from those bits, they lay them out, and they cure them within a resin or a polymer and from this cure, you can actually manufacture the countertop itself. And you can actually change the design on it based on that. Now, people use different colors of the quartz crystals and different polymers and different resins to achieve a different look. But ultimately, you can get a lot of the closer looks to granite. And usually, they're a lot lighter colors. That's why quartz is pretty popular right now. But it is much more of a manufactured process than granite. And it usually is processed in America. If you're living in the United States, you're probably getting quartz countertops that have been manufactured here. So that's really how they differ from each other. But let's get into actually how they function differently from each other. So as far as functionality is concerned, quartz is a little bit harder than granite, which actually shocked me. I thought that all the resins and polymers would actually make it a bit, uh, you know, maybe not as strong as a whole piece of rock. And I was actually shocked to find that quartz is relatively harder than granite. Now, it's not meaning granite is this soft material that, you know, you, you chip away your knife and it's going to break or something to crack. Now, both of them can scratch with blades, so you really shouldn't be using them as a cutting board, especially since you use a lot of cleaners on it. It's just not a good thing anyway. Um, but as far as taking dings and chips and normal things, granite's still going to hold up. Quartz just holds up a little bit better. Honestly, I don't think there's really too much of a difference, and the difference, if it is anything, is negligible. So what the real difference actually is, is that granite is porous and quartz is not. So granite, because it is porous, can actually stain when you put things like, like coffee. You leave a cup with coffee on it. It can actually stain the granite if you don't have it sealed. Now, a lot of people just get their granite sealed, and you really don't have that problem from there. But uh, quartz really will never, it's non-porous, it really will never absorb stains. It doesn't mean it can't, but it's a lot less likely to do so. And then moving on from that, pretty much the only thing left is heat resistance. Granite, incredibly heat resistant. I, I don't know, like you can kind of go to the extreme with these. And quartz isn't going to break on, on extremely uh, or, or just normally hot stuff. Like you put a hot coffee mug or something or you take your coffee pot off you put it on a quartz countertop it's not going to crack and explode but uh you put some extremely hot pans you start getting up there in levels of heat 
and in just very specific scenarios, you might damage your quartz countertops, but granite usually holds up pretty well. But I mean, other than that, functionally, they're the same. They're, they're really hard rock countertops and, you know, they're pretty durable. So that's pretty much the functionality differences of them. Okay, so let's get into the prices of these materials. So it really depends because there's so many different types of each and every single one. And it gets totally wonky, especially with granite, because granite can have certain granites are are more rare and certain granites are more common. And among those, some are more sought after versus others. You could have a rare granite that's not so sought after, or you can have a cheap granite that's really sought after and they kind of meet in the middle, or you could have a really rare, really sought after granite that just goes way over in price. So it gets kind of confusing when you're talking about them. But as far as the prices, quartz is generally cheaper than granite for most case scenarios. Now they have a huge overlap because there are more quartzes that people like that maybe are more difficult to manufacture. Certain colors or polymers or resumers in them make them more, more expensive just to manufacture. But ultimately, because you can manufacture them and you can manufacture them in a simple way, it's not as intensive and it's not as energy intensive. It's really one of the things that drives up granite prices. And also quartz can kind of be broken down and quartz can be manufactured in ways that you can kind of get around it and you can kind of do different things that can help alleviate the cost. Whereas you have granite, you have a set quarry and that's it. Like you don't have any more granite to go get. You can't just go grow granite in the trees. It's not something you can do. So granite sought after for that reason. And um, while quartz is definitely more popular right now, Granite really is a timeless piece and it comes and goes. So that can really affect, you know, how the resale value is. The resale value is actually a pretty interesting thing because right now quartz is hot. People really like the quartz and they especially like the long white countertops, like the islands that you see with the veins through them. And you can get different colored veins. You can have silver ones or gold ones, or you can get ones that are parallel to each other or ones that like kind of bridge off in a Y or like tree pattern or anything like that. You can get all sorts of different designs with quartz, and that's what people love. But you can actually still get those designs with granite countertops, just not a lot of people are used to it. If you see a lot of countertops that are granite, you're probably looking at 2010s and 2000s granite countertops where they're kind of the speckled pepper color or the black color and this onyx kind of black that has like a shine to it. Most people are used to those granite countertops, but granite countertops can actually look like quartz. In fact, quartz tries to emulate granite countertops a lot of times. But ultimately, as far as resale value goes, right now, quartz is going to have great resale value just because the typical trends in quartz right now and the typical patterns that are being manufactured are very popular. People really like the veins. People really like the white light colors that come with them. And granite is seen now as sometimes out of style with a lot of its variations, but that doesn't mean you can't get in-style variations of granite. The thing being is that granite is overall pretty timeless. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things you got to juggle. You got to go, well, will people like this in 10 to 15 years when I think about selling the house? It's honestly hard to say, but it's something you kind of really have to make that calculated decision yourself. People buy houses with granite countertops all the time. It's not like people are going to say, oh, this is a non-issue. They'll definitely live in them because they're great countertops and they're highly functional. So people like that and they don't look bad. Um, even if they're not in the latest trend that's going on today. So that's all I have today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to buy a house in the Atlanta area, be sure to check out my information in the description below, and I'd be happy to help. That should be it for now. Thanks, guys.